What's up everybody, another beautiful day in Azeroth and today we'll be taking a look at a rework dungeon, the Everbloom, from Warlords of Draenor and part of Season 3 Dungeon Pool. Now I'll be going over notable trash, interrupts and boss mechanics. Let me know what y'all think of these dungeon guides in the comments. Starting off with notable trash before the first balls. Make sure to interrupt the naturalist choking vines. It force grip stuns targeted players. Otherwise help the poor tank by interrupting dancing thorns. The cultivators and dread petals. You need to interrupt cultivators enraged growth. It's probably the best fertilizer in the world making the petals grow big, lush and incredibly angry. The melded berserker will leap to a random player and spin to win. Stun in captives if possible, it does more than a little damage. The menders cast healing waters. Make sure to interrupt this unless your goal is to make the mobs live longer. Then we have the first boss in the new raid, Amirdrasil. But before the Teldrasil treatment. So gnarl roots, gnarl root roots, everyone in the party needs to be nuked down unless you can break them yourself. This overlaps with living leaves which spawns a little hurricane at each player's location. Don't be in it, just leave it alone. And you will face these trash mobs up until after second bows. Well, except gnarl root, because there's only one gnarl root. R.I.P. So the first boss wither bark, and trust me, his bark is worse than his bite. You wanna tank the boss far away from the water. This pretty wall will do the trick. Players with unchecked growths should see a doctor, but they will also get marked and chased by a vine. When it reaches you, it spawns an unchecked growth on the ground. Use this to build a little wall blocking the boss. Now after a bit, Witterbark will dry out, stunning him and increases his damage taken by 100% and it lasts until he's done moisturizing. Throughout this phase, swirly orbs of water will travel towards the boss, moisturizing him if they reach him. Now you can kill these, however, if they travel through an unchecked growth, it will consume the orb and spawn an ad. And it is a lot better having to kill the flower ad than running after orbs since you can just tank ad on boss. And since the boss takes 100% more damage when he's dry, you want him to stay dry for as long as possible. When the phase end, fight repeats. Then we have notable trash before the second boss. You'll still get naturalist, menders, cultivators and berserkers, but you'll also get a few twisted abominations their noxious eruption. Big AoE dot, you can outrange this, but otherwise it's just a heal forehead mechanic. It also poisons the tank with its claw, but otherwise it's just more of the same trash wise. You can skip a lot of trash by going into this house, wake up the poor bastard with a slap to the face and then jump out the window and move behind the roots. Now for the second boss, bosses, bosses, the ancient protectors, a council style fight and the only boss tank is able to move is is Dulhu. Dulhu? The other two stay put. Now when tank gets targeted by noxious charge, they need to move far away from the other bosses and spawn their discharge. This will also cause all other players to spawn a little discharge, so make sure to move out of melee from bosses or you might not be able to DPS them. Discharge bad. Now make sure to never miss interrupting life wardens revitalize. Big heal with a hot. Now the hot portion is dispellable, but better to just interrupt. They also channel a group-wide AoE, Torrential Furry, just heal. And then we have the Earth Shaper tell us their toxic bloom needs to be interrupted or everyone gets stunned, which is actually a DPS loss. Also has a group-wide AoE, Extra Terrestrial Furry, again just heal. Then you want to keep Dolohu on top of one of the bosses for cleave and burn down one of the caster bosses first while cleaving Dolohu. Now if you have an abundance of interrupts, you can kick their Water Bolt and Wrath as well to reduce group damage. Moving on! So, notable trash before the third boss. The infested ice caller. Kick frostbolt and watch out for the cold fusion cast. Spawns a ring of frozen orbs that collapses inwards. Touch one and you become a flavorless popsicle. The putrid pyromancer. Kick their pyroblast and watch out for cinderbolt salvo. It deals a ton of damage and spawns a swarm of fire swirls. Then we have the addled arcanomancer. Kick their arcane blast. They will throw a spatial disruption arcane orb towards a random player's location. Don't hug the orb. Now by themselves they aren't too bad but combined you can get some funky overlaps. So beware. Now for the Archmage, Soul, which is the combination of 
previous trash. The boss alternates between fire, frost, and arcane magic. When she swaps magic school, a growing infestation will replicate her previous element's big ability. For fire, she gets fireball and cinderbolt storm, which spawns a ton of swirls near players, which spawns patches of fire. Don't paint the town with these and avoid fire. For the frost, it's frost bolt and glacial fusion. Avoid getting popsicleized by the orbs. And for arcane, it's arcane blast and spatial compression. Throws an arcane orb towards a player's location, but when it detonates, it pulls all player towards its location. This targets furthest away players, you can bait this. Now, due to growing infestation, you'll get overlaps like glacial fusion and spatial compression, so you'll get pulled towards it while needing to dodge frozen orbs. Then we have trash before last boss, which are two packs of the same mobs. So, Yalnu has a colossal frontal cone. Cone bad, don't take to the face. The Kirin Tor Mages channels brush fire into the boss, increasing its damage taken by 300%. When boss casts a verdant eruption, it will spawn a flowering ancient, which will interrupt the Kirin Tor's damage increase channel. So this needs to be nuked down fast. It deals group-wide damage and has a frontal. And the swirl when the ad spawn stuns you? Swirl bad. When y'all new cast Genesis, tons of flowers will start to sprout up and after 12 seconds they'll grow up to be feral lashers. Stay, stay. So, so channel your inner gardener and start stomping flowers before they grow into real grass holes. The lasher also has an interruptible cast. Lasher venom. So kill big ad, stomp flowers, avoid cone, nuke bows. And that's pretty much it for the reworked Everbloom mythic. Hope it helps and if you have any questions at all hit me up in the comments on stream or become a patron or twitch sub and get access to the stanky discord where you can get help with anything pv related like dungeons raiding enhancement slapping don't forget the usual stuff if you want to help out like comment subscribe and uh, slap that notification bell thank you all for watching i will uh, see you next time